Hey everybody, Jim here, and today I am in an area of West Tokyo called Musashi Sakai. Uh, it's my first time here, but it's pretty awesome. It's supposed to have been a beautiful spring day. It's actually overcast and it's raining on us a little bit. Um, but we found this like very cool temple here, so we've been kind of having a look around and exploring. Uh, what we're really here for today is for me to go to a hard off and pick up a metric ton of video games. It's about a three kilometer walk though. So we decided we could take the scenic route and have a look at some of the cherry blossoms and other cool stuff going on in this neighborhood right now. Uh, but anyway, enjoy some of the scenery of Musashi Sakai and we will soon be at a big hard off fully stocked with retro games. Let's go. Konami. Okay, so we finally found the building where the hard off is. Uh, it was a little tricky. We were walking in the wrong direction for a little while because uh, there is a gigantic ramen sign that was obscuring the hard off sign. So I did not know where the hell I was going for a little bit, uh, but we got it turned around. Thank you, Google Maps. And now here we are, a big old building with a hard off inside. So let's go have a look around. Okay, so here we are, obviously, at the Hard Off. Uh, oddly enough, a huge sign, very easy to see here, uh, except for, you know, kind of obscured a little bit. Uh, but anyway, finally, after a lot of walking, getting turned around a little bit, uh, you know, a lovely walk though it was, uh, we're here at the Hard Off, and I'm gonna get inside and hopefully find a whole lot of retro games. So let's go check it out. Oh. 
All right. Getting started in this big hard off, super well stocked as we look at this first case with some cool little handheld things in it. A little Dragon Ball and uh, there's some Neo Geo pockets in there. A Sailor Moon thing, I guess. They're kind of akin to the little Tiger handheld electronics. Um, this hard off was like really, really well stocked. I actually walked out of here with a lot of games. You're actually going to see that a little later. I think I actually had two bags full and I filled my backpack as well. As we take a look at one of these uh, kind of quasi money cases. It's not like super money, you know. Uh, but there's some uh, PC Engine stuff in there. Legend of Valkyrie, Puyo Puyo CD, the Mario something or other. Is that... Am I mistaken or am I looking at that now? And That's like the disk system thing, the disk drive thing. But there's Goimon, there's Area 88 for 18.7. There's Super Back to the Future 2, which is an awesome game. And it has a 10-day warranty on it. Actually, uh, looking at all of these... Um, pretty much everything in here with the big... Uh, price tags on them. They have a little um, little box on the right right hand side that says uh, how long they're kind of like a warranty lasts for. So that uh, Rock Man, it's twenty two thousand yen, and it has a ten day return policy. So some of these actually, yeah, they have ten day return policies, which is pretty cool. And they have uh, some of them have three month, ninety day return policies on them which is uh, pretty damn exceptional uh, for stuff like this, as old as it is, you know. Uh, but I guess when they're asking you to pay, like, you know, decent money for some, some older games, a return policy uh, helps uh, lube the deal, so to speak, get you to buy it. But we've got some cool stuff here. Neo Geo Pocket, a few Mega Drive games, some PC Engine stuff, Same 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 there, a.k.a. Fire Shark. Uh, a couple of disc system games, Metroid, Zelda 2, Castlevania 1 and 2, uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, R-Type, R-Type Delta for the PlayStation, I think that's one I actually haven't played yet. And uh, a lady with a giant X carved in her chest, I don't know what the hell that is. And uh, Super R-Type, 3850, good game, not as good as R-Type 3, and uh, Daiku no Gensan, fun stuff. More, more, more. Super Famicom T2, Goemon 2, Tiny Toons. I think that's the sports one. I've actually never played the sports one, but I think I saw it in a review somewhere. And we have some Game Boy Advance, which is, uh, I mean, I've said this a million times, like handheld stuff I really don't know much of anything about, unless potentially if it's like Game Boy, original Game Boy or DS. Um, but some GameCube, which is nice. It's uh, you know, great to come across GameCube games because... Uh, one, I really like the GameCube, and I like the games on it. I think uh, it's a great console with a bunch of great games. Two, I do get requests to pick up GameCube games, and you know what? They're not the most common to come across. And uh, they had like a nice big selection of games here, and some good stuff too. Uh, so I was very uh, happy to see a whole bunch of GameCube games for me to peruse. And they're not terribly expensive either, uh, usually. Uh, as we come to a bunch of GBA, this is where I'm going to step back a little bit because I'm having my morning coffee and I also don't know anything about GBA. Here's here's Sonic Advance. Isn't that nice? I'm going to have some coffee. You all have a nice look at these uh, Game Boy games and I'll be right back.
All right. Finally, something I am a little more familiar with. Super Famicom. And some Super Puyo Puyo. Super common game. I come across a lot. Great puzzle game. The Battle of Destiny. Uh, Garo Densetsu. Which is an admirable port on the Super Famicom. A lot of the, the Neo Geo ports to the, the Super Famicom are uh, not so bad. Uh, here we have uh, Chrono Trigger. Complete copy. Really beautiful artwork. Great condition. And it's... Uh, you know, it's it's pretty cheap. I don't think these go for any more than like maybe ten bucks or something Which is like polar opposite of its uh, North American counterpart. We have Gambare Goemon And that is Legend of the Mystical Ninja And again pretty cheap for a box copy a lot of these I mean the loose cards They're usually between three and three hundred yen a thousand yen or something um, Even the a lot of the box stuff is gonna be under 20 bucks Puyo Puyo Sun 64 you might have caught on that I'm a Puyo Puyo fan. I do indeed like that series. I'm a puzzle game fan in general, but uh, yeah, Puyo Puyo, always fun. And uh, some Bachingo and slot games. This guy looks pretty happy. He's just some obese guy with a cigar with Surrounded by Bunny Girls. And this game, I don't know why, but I like it. <laughs> I want to play this game now. I can't, I can't exactly explain why. Articulated very well. Aladdin for the Super Famicom. Great game by Capcom. Uh, there's, you know, the debate. What's better, the SNES or Genesis game? I don't particularly care. I'm happy that we have two awesome Aladdin games. Uh, Dragon Quest III. The um, port from the Famicom to Super Famicom. It's a really good version of that game. We've got some DBZ stuff here, including this one. I believe it's... Uh, what is it, Super Saiyan Densetsu? One of the uh, RPGs based on Dragon Ball Z. That's pretty cool. And complete copy of Super Butoden for like eight bucks. Uh, really great cover art. Gotta love that 90s DBZ aesthetic. One of those kids that grew up on DBZ. And some Choma Kaimura. Uh, boxed, complete, like 30 bucks or something. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, for such a great game. Some Tetris Battle Guy Din. Uh, I always pick up these whenever I come across them because that's one of my favorite Super Famicom games. And I sent out uh, quite a few copies to some fairly satisfied individuals. But we've got lots of loose stuff here. Again, usually everything between 300 yen and like a thousand yen. We've got our Gombody Goemon games, Tetris Battle Guy Din, and uh, Rockman X3. Fantastic. Um, so this is great, you know, some people specify, you know, they like box games, they like loose games. Loose games are obviously always cheaper, um, but even when you buy them loose, you know, you still get some cool artwork on the uh, cartridges, and they're nice and cheapy cheap. You know, you can, for a few bucks, you can buy like a dozen games in here and walk out, you know, 30 bucks, a dozen games, not a bad deal at all. Got some more Chrono Trigger, Rockman 7. Which is awesome. Magical drop. Uh, the Super Dodgeball with the little chibi Gundam and Ultraman characters, which is pretty cool. And some Bomberman. They actually had a lot of Bomberman games on the Super Famicom. And uh, they're all fun. East 3, Wanderers from East. Great game. Fun, uh, kind of short action RPG. One of the Ranma one half games. One of the uh, fighters for the Super Famicom. Which, granted, they're not all... Great. Actually, none of them are great. <laughs> I think, at best, one of them is, is kind of okay. Um, but it's Ranma, so if you're a Ranma fan, you're going to love it. Yu Yu Hakusho Final, really good fighting game. This one's kind of worse for wear, but not a terribly expensive game, and it's a fun fighter. And we continue to explore the depths. I told you, this place has a lot of games. Uh, some magical adventure, all the Mickey games, all the 16-bit Mickey games, except for Fantasia. That game blows, but the other ones are great. Final Fight 2 for like 20 bucks, and it's complete. And uh, that ain't bad. And, what? you know, this is one of the uh, things about <laughs> recording voiceovers for these things well after you did them, because you don't remember what the hell you did. Um, this uh, Ranma One Half RPG, which I used to have, and it was okay, I suppose. Um, we've got plenty of other stuff here, including Yu Yu Hakusho, the third game. Sort of the more, like, strategy, 
combat. I don't know how to describe those games. They're kind of weird. The gameplay is odd. And we have some Sailor Moon S. One of the puzzle games. Is it Fua Fua Panic? I don't know. But there are a few Sailor Moon puzzle games for the Super Famicom. And those are fun as well. As we move on to something else I'm fairly familiar with. And that's the good old Famicom with some Hokuto no Ken 4. The Hokuto no Ken RPGs. Not so great. Gekege no Kitaro. This is a great anime. I've actually... I don't think I've ever played any of the... The Kitaro games on the Famicom. And some Jaja Marukun. A uh, classic series by Jalico. Those are like really fun, simple games. And Makaimura boxed for 2700 so like 25 bucks, And you get yourself a copy of uh, Ghouls and Ghosts boxed. And for even less than that, like, what is that, like 13 bucks or something? You can get a complete copy of Gradius? That's a hell of a deal. Uh, so spoilers, I did end up picking up. Uh, a handful of boxed Famicom games, a whole ton of loose Famicom and Super Famicom games, and even some PC Engine, Saturn, and Dreamcast today. As we look at Rockman 4 and some other various things. I love coming across a wall of these Famicom carts because it's nice and colorful. You just never know what you're going to find in here. Rainbow Islands on the one hand, then something as simple as baseball, some Rockman games, other various things. So, uh, some magical Taruru Tokun. That's really nice. Uh, anyway, uh, you can listen to me yammer on, or you can just appreciate all the Famicomi goodness. So I'm gonna take another quick coffee break and enjoy looking at a whole lot of Famicom games. Okay, um, nice that we have some Mega Drive games here, but this is uh, another thing I've been running into recently is I don't come across as many Mega Drive games as I would like, and uh, if anyone ever requests loose Mega Drive games, best of luck, because it's hard to find them loose. Some Sonic Spinball, which I love. I actually picked up a copy for myself today. I've actually <laughs> been playing that quite a bit. Um, yeah, the... The clamshells for Mega Drive games, um, I mean, they're just, they're going to survive the nuclear apocalypse. I, you know, it's its hard to come across uh, loose Mega Drive carts sometimes. As we come here, these are all, like, fastened to the wall with these, like, zip-tie security things. Um, for whatever reason, I guess they're like, well, these are the money games, so we can't just let anybody walk off with these, even though some of them are, I mean, they've got Gradius and... Uh, yeah, Sky Kid things, you know, a bunch of these games are a few bucks a piece. Uh, but stuff like Final Fight Guy, maybe Poppin' Twinbee, Contra Spirits, Herodias, things like that. Maybe they're a little more expensive, but a bunch of the games on this rack were not exactly rarefied air. But hey, what can you do? That's how they set up this store. Uh, anyway, we're looking here at another kind of slightly money case as we look at a few things. In particular... Uh, I took notice of Metal Black, which is a Saturn shooter that uh, looks pretty cool. I've actually still never played Metal Black, which is um, 
Kind of a shame, really, considering I'm a big fan of uh, Sega Saturn shoot 'em ups. Uh, but there you go. I have not played it. But anyway, yeah, you know, some slightly more pricey stuff in there. Some loose GBAs and PC Engine stuff. We have some Switch here, which I have a Switch. I enjoy my Switch quite a lot. Um, but for example, we have some Friday the 13th, which I still have never played, but it looks like a lot of fun. I am a fan of the Friday the 13th series. What about you? Are you a fan of Friday the 13th? What's your favorite kill? A lot of people go for the sleeping bag kill because it is quite comical, but uh, I'm not sure. I, uh, it, it's hard to choose from so many uh, great kills. Maybe that guy who gets his head crushed with a, a leather strap. That was kind of cool. Um, this uh, Catherine Full Body, which is a great game, I actually have the Switch version and have enjoyed it immensely. Actually, I think I reviewed it on the channel a little while back. You can go check that out if you're so inclined. Um, but yeah, Catherine Full Body. That's something I do like, but uh, I think most people know I'm not the most up-to-date on my gaming. I'm kind of way behind the times. Um, looking at some DS here, which I did play a lot of DS uh, when I had it. Mostly playing the Dragon Quest games, some Dragon Ball DS, which I also had. That's a very fun game. Um, but mostly playing, yeah, like this, the uh, Dragon Quest ports to the DS, like Dragon Quest 6 and 4 and 5. Um, I played the hell out of those, and of course a lot of Mario Kart DS. Um, but other than that, I'm not so familiar with the the library, but uh, PS2. Another uh, just awesome system with a massive library of games, and one that is just so uh, very cheap to collect for, if you're um, into imports, for the most part, anyway. There are a few titles for the PS2. Here we have some R-Type Final, and that's awesome. I love R-Type. Anyway, uh, yeah, there are some PS2 titles uh, that are, you know, fairly expensive, um, as one might expect. Uh, but for the most part, if you want to collect PS2 games, Gradius, what is that, 3 and 4? Or is it 4 and 5? Um, if you want to collect uh, PS2 games, uh, they're they're going to be pretty cheap. As you can see, I'm pulling out all this stuff. It's like, you know, 300 yen a piece. That's, you know, exchange rate that's less than $3. Um, so pretty cheap stuff. Uh, even like some of the Japan exclusive stuff, like the... Um, I want to pull out... Sengoku Basara is not a Japan exclusive, but the sequels were. And those are really good. And uh, you can get those for very little. And as, as well as Sengoku Basara Cross, the 2D fighting game based on this Sengoku Basara series developed by Arc System Works and it's really good and it's uh, really inexpensive and we come over to some PS1 games like Ace Combat 3 which is uh, the first one of the series I played and still my favorite to this day um, but PS1 is another one even though some of the games in the PS1 library um, are getting pretty damn expensive uh, for the most part uh, the PS1 is another system where there's, there's just such an abundance of games for it that if you wanted to start collecting, you know, Japanese PS1 games, you can get lots of them for like a few bucks a piece. Or if you go to a junk bin in a hard-off like this, you can find lots and lots of games for like a hundred yen. And they're just kind of, you know, they're a little worse for wear. And Disney Tetris, for some reason, developed by Capcom. Was not aware of that. Um, yeah, my mouth is getting so full of spit. What the hell is going on today? Hey, look at some PS1 games while I... Swallow spit and drink some drink some coffee. I'll be right back.
right, back in the saddle again, as we've got a, a little selection of Saturn and Dreamcast games here. Some good stuff, though. So I did end up picking up a few of these titles, stuff like Sonic Jam, Street Fighter Zero, and uh, I think Guilty Gear X, and a handful of others, as we have some PC Engine stuff here, including R-Type 1 and R-Type 2, uh, which I was so happy to see because... You know, I come across PC Engine games pretty easily if I go to somewhere like Akihabara, for example. Um, but when I'm on my, my hard-off trips, uh, PC Engine games are kind of hard to come by. So as we're looking at stuff like PC Genjin and Knight Rider and R-Type and all this cool stuff, um, I was really just so uh, happy to finally see a nice little selection of PC Engine games. Uh, so any uh, anyone watching this, any patrons who got some some PC Genjin or some uh, Knight Rider in your box this month, you know where it came from. We have some, uh, yeah, Yokai Dochuki, Galaga 88, and uh, so I was just uh, thrilled, elated in fact, to finally come across a nice little selection of PC Engine games. Not the most common thing in the world, so I picked up a bunch of these. I, I almost cleaned them out of of PC Engine games, which I know is terrible because then the next person that goes in behind me is going to be like, hey, what the hell? Where'd all the PC Engine games go? And I say to you, sorry, pal. But uh, I, I needed them. <laughs> uh, Snatcher on PC Engine, great port of that game. In fact, the, the first CD-based port of it, and I think the only port after the MSX version that um, was actually worked on by Kojima. And a couple of Neo Geo CD games, so pretty cool. Nice little selection there of Saturn, PC Engine, Dreamcast, PlayStation, PS2. All stuff that I like a lot. And uh, we move on. Oh! A wild Tikyo Sam appears. Uh, as we move on to the final little portion of the shop, where we have some of these cool little mini arcade cabinet things with some Bubble Bobble, Pac-Man, Galaga, all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, but we have some consoles in here. 16,500 yen for a core graphics. Uh, but it's boxed, so that's not such a bad deal, I guess. And we have some stuff down here, like uh, a Victor Saturn boxed up for... T and then this thing, like, what is this, um, FM Towns Marty or something? But it's like 800 bucks, so kiss my ass on that. Like 300 bucks for a, a Duo R RX, whichever it was. Um, so, yeah, not, not the most affordable consoles. Um, but we do have a nice console aisle here. We have lots of... Lots of stuff. You can get your PS3s, PS2s, PS4s, in a variety of colors. And uh, we have some, you know, these uh, little, you know, loose Famicom consoles coming with absolutely no kinds of hookups or anything. They're uh, 3300 so it's like 30 bucks for a loose old Famicom. 12,000 yen for a 3DO boxed, so that's like $100. That's not so bad, I guess, for a boxed 3DO. We got some Dreamcast Saturns. And PS1s, the PS1s as well, they're like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, depending on how complete they are. 60 for this Saturn with two controllers and all of its hookups. So if you got 60 bucks to spare, you can pick yourself up a Saturn or a Dreamcast. This uh, AV Famicom, just the loose, just the deck by itself, 5,500 yen. Which, um, now you're gonna have to go buy controllers, AV, and, uh, AC adapter, Mega Drive with a pretty cool, like, the Mega Pad, a Turbo Pad for it. That's 8800. Mega Drives, for whatever reason, those are a little pricey too. 8800 up to like 100, over 100 for the Model 2. And some uh, more, some white Saturns, which I like, including a boxed one. And it's still 6,000 yen. It's a little over 60 bucks, and it's got a three month. I guess warranty on it, so that's not bad. And we got some box consoles down here. Which I'm always uh, impressed that these have been kept in good condition after 30 some odd years. Even if they are a little discolored sometimes, as is this uh, Super Famicom. But again, these have little warranties on them. So you buy them and uh, it's not working out for you, you can bring it back. Look at that! There's no uh, RF switch with it, but that's, uh, that's a nice shape. You can find an RF switch. That ain't a problem. And uh, let's take a look at another one, look at the condition of that, and there you go. And it's complete, pretty good condition, boxed, all that stuff. 
And uh, you can pick that up for whatever whatever the hell it was, like 60 bucks or something. Anyway, we're all done in here. Uh, let's get outside for some final words. Let's go. Okay. Wow. So that was a pleasant surprise. There was a lot of video games in that hard off. As you can see, I got a couple of bags here. My backpack is full, bought a lot of games. Uh, spent a little bit of money, but that's okay. Most of this is for the patrons, and I picked up a few little choice items for myself. But yeah, this uh, hard off uh, down from uh, Musashi Sakai. Uh, this was a really good, well stocked hard off, and a really nice, friendly staff, too. So if you're ever in the neighborhood, definitely check it out. Uh, I made off like a, a fat rat. So anyway, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Hey everybody, Jim here, and today I am in the neighborhood of Kawagoe, kind of on the outskirts of Tokyo. This is a place that's really well known for having like lots of Edo period style buildings and a whole section of town that is still done up in the Edo period style and lots of shrines and temples and cool stuff like this. So we're going to walk around, we're going to explore a little bit while we still got some daylight, and then we're going to head over to a Mandai Shoten so that I can look for some retro games. So pretty cool day today. It's going to be kind of like a collision of traditional Japanese aesthetics and my love for retro gaming in a single video. So let's go explore Kawagoe a little bit. Shenmue. The experience begins.
everybody. We are here now in front of the Mondai Shoten here in Kawagoe. We're going to go in there and look for some games. If you want to see actually what we were up to today, uh, I'm here with Tikio Sam. So if you want to see the kinds of fun stuff we were doing today here in Kawagoe, uh, go and check out the video he's going to post about it on his channel. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We saw lowriders and ate ice cream, so it was pretty cool. Anyway, let's get inside Mandai Shoten and hopefully find a whole lot of retro video games. Let's go! Alright, Mandai Shoten Kawagoe, playing this footage back at home, sipping some beer, and uh, we bypass all of this uh, more modern stuff, PS4 and Vita and Switch, and we go straight to the retro stuff, because that's what I'm here for. And we come to, first up, the money case, and we're going to see some cool reproductions in here, including Mad Stalker. Which spoilers I did pick up because you can take a look at some of the labels on some of these games. Um, they're in this case and they're being bathed with fluorescent light all day. So some of these labels were really faded. And uh, Mad Stalker, you know, brand new game pretty much. Uh, so I grabbed it, saved it from all that fluorescent light. Even though you can look in here and there's, you know, Akumajo Densetsu, Street Fighter 2010... Um, other really good Famicom games and Super Famicom games, Mega Drive and all that. These cool little things, these little uh, our little mini arcade reproduction things, those are pretty cool too. Um, so there was, you know, some pretty cool stuff in the case, but I ended up just grabbing that, um, yeah, Mad Stalker for the Sega Mega Drive, which was recently released by Columbus Circle. They make some good stuff. A meager little selection of Xbox games, but not so hot on that. What I want to look at are these Super Famicom games, including a... We have some wrestling games here. This Astral Bout game, I've heard, is pretty cool. That's an 800 yen game. We've got uh, plenty of stuff on the racks here. Plenty of loose carts. And this uh, FMW game, that's another wrestling slash fighting game that is not any good. That game is really terrible. It should be like 100 yen. Uh, max. Um, but I have heard uh, good things about Astral Bout. Uh, I think I was watching somebody's wrestling, a video on wrestling games, Gegege no Kitaro, some uh, Ganbare Goimon games. Those are always good. Uh, Ganbare Goimon uh, 1, 2, 3, I mean, they're all fantastic. The first one being Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Um, it's an entire series you just can't go wrong with. 
As we uh, continue to look around, we got some Kirby Kunio no Odin, which is actually a really fun uh, puzzle game with uh, Kunio Kun characters in it. And uh, I like that a lot. And uh, more, 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 including uh, one of the uh, little Great Battle games. I think it's like a Great Battle Gaiden game. Um, some more Kunio things like that. Uh, so some pretty, pretty cool stuff there. And most of it not uh, terribly priced as we look at a little bit of DS and things. And uh, Wii U and Wii. All things that I personally am not uh, collecting games for. And I don't really get much requests for stuff like that. So we move on uh, to some uh, Sailor Moon. I think every Sailor Moon game was uh, exclusive to Japan, if I'm not mistaken. And some of them actually aren't too bad. Panel de Pon, really great puzzle game, released as, I think it's Tetris Attack in uh, other parts of the world. So that's a fantastic game. Another one, kind of like the uh, Kirby's Avalanche, a puzzle game that got reskinned when it got uh, ported to other parts of the world. And uh, Maui Mallard is a game I really like, actually. I think that's kind of an underappreciated... Uh, I think it's Cold Shadow in uh, North America. But it's really great. we got some DBZ games like Super Batoden 2 and 3 and some of the uh, RPGs. And Hyper Dimension. Hyper Dimension is uh, really good. I like it. Fun gameplay. Uh, really cool visual style. Tiny Toon Adventures. Another really good one. I think... What is that called? Buster Bus Loose in uh, North America? Pretty fun platformer. Konami always did right by the Tiny Toons. And a Super WrestleMania brother. Which, uh, Hulkster is cool, but, uh, Macho Man is the real, the real hero to me. Uh, Macho Man and the Road Warriors. I just, uh, can't get enough of that. Um, some of these Wagyan games, those are, like, really simple. I think those are really meant for, like, a much younger audience. Super Donkey Kong. Uh, Legend of Mana is, like, a few bucks, <laughs> uh, and uh, so is Seiken Densetsu 3. You gotta love the uh, RPGs in Japan. They're basically as common as dirt. Yoshi's Island, very good. That's another one that's only a few bucks, so that's a really good deal on that. Uh, some super, what the hell am I saying? Some N64 games here. Excuse me, I gotta take a beer break. I'll be right back. Alright, delicious beer, now wetting my whistle, and we're looking at some Ranma and Wrestlemania, the arcade game, more Wrestlemania, totally different lineup on the cover though, Super Wrestlemania was Hulkster, Macho Man, Road Warriors, and Sid, Jake the Snake, just a few years later, some Super Wrestlemania, or Wrestlemania arcade game, you got Bret Hart, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, totally different uh, Phil the Wrestlers at the time. Uh, Mickey's, I think, Magical Adventure 3. I think that one is also exclusive uh, to Japan. Or was, at least. I don't know if it is now. Maybe it's been translated or ported since then. Maybe digitally or something. I don't know. I don't stay on top of these things quite as much as I should. We got uh, these JoJo's Bizarre Adventure games. Uh, that one is... Uh, I forget, something like the Phantom... Phantom something, and this one is Golden Wind. I actually had more fun with Golden Wind. And uh, that one's uh, pretty cool. It's it's sort of like a beat-em-up, I guess. Um, they have two different, the original and the kind of greatest hits version. Uh, but I do like that game. I think I reviewed it like eight years ago or something. Uh, but it was pretty cool. And some other stuff, like the Kingo games. Are those called, like, Way of the Samurai or something? Appleseed EX, um, which I think I've played before. It's kind of an action uh, run and gun, if I'm not mistaken. And we've got some other good stuff here. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, 
which I think you still, you can't unlock all of the characters in it if you don't have the online uh, capabilities. Uh, Gekka no Kenshi 1 and 2, aka the uh, Last Blade Collection. Those are some fantastic games. They're really, really good. Battle Stadium D.O.N. is also pretty good. It's, it's a Smash Brothers clone with some anime characters in it. And the Sega Ages uh, Hokuto no Ken. And that is also pretty cool. As we carry on Ruroni Kenshin, sort of a uh, third-person action hack-and-slash game, uh, which I'm pretty sure is also exclusive to Japan. I have no uh, real idea. <laughs> I can't always... Con I always say that about some games. I'm like, yeah, this is totally exclusive to Japan, and then it turns out, no, it was released in Belarus. Oh, okay, great. I'm an idiot. Um, as we look at more cool stuff, like Odin Sphere, and there's some Persona, all kinds of stuff. Nice little selection of PS4 games there. Um, and we're looking at Famicom and some loose PC Engine Hue cards, which uh, none of these games really looking like anything special, and I don't really collect loose PC Engine games, or Game Gear, or or Wonder Swan, but they had a little bit of each of those. I do love me some DuckTales, though. Can't go wrong with that. And loose carts of DuckTales are always pretty cheap. Rockman! Rockman appears. Uh, Rockman 5, which is actually... Uh, I've said this of the, the first six games. Rockman 5 is actually my favorite. And though I love 2, I love 3, 4, I love the original. I love all of them. But for some reason, Rockman 5, that's just the one that really... Uh, you know, chimed with me. Uh, maybe it's a combination of things. Uh, but some people say I'm crazy for holding that opinion. Uh, the Mac Ross game, which is pretty cool. And some Mighty Bomb Jack. Lovely game. I didn't really know anything at all about Mighty Bomb Jack until I saw it on Game Center CX. But uh, I do love that show, so I was like, okay, fine, whatever, cool game. Uh, Ninja Ryu Kinden, one and two. Um, A.K.A. Ninja Gaiden, great stuff. Niketsu Kakuto Densetsu, another good game. Two on two, Kunio-kun Fighter, Downtown Special, uh, super fun. Can't uh, can't go wrong with that. And Downtown Koreyuke something or other. That's another one that was exclusive to Japan. Uh, it's a long title though. Ninja Ryu Kinden Three, very good. The uh, Japanese version on the Famicom is better than. It's NES counterparts, Dragon Ball, Transformers, The Mystery of Optimus Prime, or Convoy, I think is his name in the Japanese version, and Twin B3, also pretty cool. Um, Hot Scramble, yeah, that Transformers game is terrible, but, you know, it's Transformers, so. Gen 1, what are you going to do? You got to have it. Oh, um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, tons of... Uh, Famicom games here, including Gradius 2, another Japan exclusive. Famicom version is uh, really good. The PC Engine CD version, though, oof, that's the one you want. Um, so yeah, really great stuff on the racks there. Uh, I think we're gonna swing around and look at some, hey, look, PlayStation games. So, uh, take a gander at some of these, while Jim, totally not an alcoholic, uh, Takes another little beer break. We'll be right back. Ooh, Clock Tower 2. Okay, and we're back again with some good stuff here. Street Fighter 03, my favorite 2D fighter of all time. And I think we're what we were looking at, Legend of Mana, one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, 
What a great fighting game. Absolutely fantastic. I'd love to see Capcom do something else with that property at some point in time. All-Star Battle is pretty cool, but come on. The Capcom Fighter, baby, that's where it's at. And more cool stuff. Biohazard 3, Last Escape. The uh, Biohazard game's typically pretty cheap, which uh, makes me happy. And they're pretty, uh, pretty English-friendly. Actually send the Biohazard games out, uh, usually by request, to a lot of people. Because you can still play them, uh, even in Japanese. Not so difficult. And uh, we got a selection of Rockman games here. You know, Rockman X4, X3, which is really good on the PlayStation. I actually reviewed X3 on the PlayStation recently. Ooh, and look at that cover art for Rockman Complete Works for the PlayStation. That's really a big reason to have those. It's just for that really killer cover art. Um, just really beautiful stuff. Uh, love it. Including uh, Rockman 6. Good stuff. Look at that. Mr. X and all of his robot bad guys. Uh, and some of the other X games. So yeah, this is just this whole shelf. Just loaded with lots of rockman -y goodness. Including Rockman Dash. A.K.A. Mega Man Legends. Another fantastic game. Is it just me or could Capcom do no wrong in the 32-bit era? I'd like to know. Maybe if you, you're, you're still watching... <laughs> down in the comments. Was there a bad 32-bit Capcom game? I'd like to know. I really would. As we look at some stuff for the PC Engine, pretty sparse uh, actually. I would love to see more games available for the PC Engine in shops like this. But you know, it's uh, it's just one of those consoles where uh, you don't find too much for it. Cobra. Um, or when you do find some stuff for it, it's uh, pretty expensive. And again, look at how faded these spines are. I think it's just something about the lights that they use in the Mondai Shoten. Um, yeah. Asuka, 120%. Burning Fest, Maxima. Uh, really great game. Well, I say that. I say really great, but as far as, like, fighting games on the PC Engine go, and there aren't that many, uh, it is pretty good. And here we have uh, Macross. I, that's not Macross 2036. What is it? I can't recall. Um, but yeah, the spines are really faded. So thanks a lot for that, Mondai Shoten. You really did a number on those spines with your fluorescent lighting. And uh, Metal Angel. And the lone Neo Geo CD game. But great game. Got Odin Setsu Special. We got some Saturn here. Sonic Wings Special. This is a fantastic top-down shooter for the Saturn. Um, and one of the more common ones, too, which I'd uh, highly recommend picking up, Shinmu, with, uh, I think, the uh, Shinmu Jutebox. Yeah, should come with the Shinmu Jutebox disc, and Shinmu 2, with a couple of bonus discs in it as well. So that's pretty cool that they were... I Actually, I come across those more than just the, the games by themselves. Uh, we got some Dreamcast here, and... Uh, yeah, again, I don't like the looks of some of these faded spines. Um, but, you know, he's got some decent games here. A little little Space Channel 5, if you uh, are so inclined. And Puyo Puyon, a.k.a. Puyo Puyo 4. Really great puzzler. Some Code Veronica action. Which uh, is, is another one that's just, like, super common. Royal Rumble! Again, another total, like, generational shift. Totally different... A uh, bunch of wrestlers on the cover. We went from Hulk and Macho to Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Dragon Ball Z Legends. Uh, actually, probably the best of the 32-bit DBZ games. Uh, and yeah, then you get to Royal Rumble, and we've got The Rock and Austin. So it's this total generational shift in the, uh, the, the landscape of pro wrestling. Uh, wow, Princess Crown. What a great game. Uh, I believe... I don't know, did I? No, I didn't make a top 10 Saturn exclusive, uh, or Jap Japan exclusive Saturn games, but yeah, uh, Princess Crown would totally be on it. Saturn version of Puyo Puyo 2. Basically anything Puyo Puyo is going to be fun. They're pretty uniform, you know, not a whole lot of difference from one to the other, but they are great. And some Street Fighter Zero. Even though that series got better and better, uh, Zero, the original, is still a pretty damn good game. And a little bit of Christmas Nights. To wrap things up. Anyway, 
uh, ladies and gentlemen and others. That's it for this little walk around uh, Mondai Shoten. Kawagoi. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay, so that was the Mandai Shoten here in Kawagoe. It was actually a little underwhelming. It wasn't nearly as cool as the one I went to in Saitama last time, uh, but they did have some pretty cool stuff in there. I actually ended up picking up a copy of Mad Stalker on the Mega Drive, sort of a reproduction just put out by uh, Columbus Circle. Wanted to rescue it from those uh, fluorescent lights they had in there. Anyway, yeah, Kawagoe. Hi, sir. Uh, nice uh, neighborhood here out in whatever the uh, east end west end of tokyo wherever the hell we are i totally lost track uh, but we had a lot of fun today i picked up a cool game and explored a little bit again go and check out the video that uh, sam behind the camera there is putting together for all the stuff we did today uh, it was a lot of fun we hung out talked to some cool people ate ice cream uh, yelled at some guys and lowriders as they like bounced up and down you know they did the lowrider thing it was pretty cool uh, anyway everybody thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and whenever you're in tokyo definitely come check out kawagoi it's pretty damn cool. So, see you next time. Take care. See you then. Goodbye. Everybody, Jim here in the neighborhood of Hachioji in West Tokyo. A uh, really cool area of the city. Nice, bright, beautiful day. We are going to walk about 20 minutes from the station, go to a big hard off complex, hopefully find a bunch of retro games. So we're going to enjoy a nice leisurely stroll on this beautiful sunny day. So let's go to hard off. Let's go. Finally, after a nice uh, leisurely stroll through Hachioji, here we are at a eco town. So it's a whole big complex of book off, hobby off, heart off, liquor off. We might have a step in there a little later and get some of the old drinky drinky. Uh, but anyway, we're going to head inside the heart off and do some game hunting. Hopefully, I can find some pretty good stuff. So let's go. PC Engine Ban, Salamanca, Gojo, Konami.
All right. Getting started in this hard off with right up front the money case as we look inside. Actually, there's some uh, Neo Geo and MSX games, including Dragon Quest, which is cool. And some of these pricier Mega Drive games, stuff in there. Good stuff, Zero Wing and Rent-A-Hero, all that. Um, and then some of these Famicom games, TMNT and Rescue Rangers, with boxes, but the boxes are collapsed for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, this is right at front. You can see these Super Famicom games, EDF, Dracula X. Uh, yeah, this is the money case. Uh, they put... Uh, the money beats right up front for everyone to see, including some Musihime Sama and uh, Ghost Chaser Densei for over $300. And right here, Rendering Ranger with manual, about 1400 bucks. And that's a lot of dough. Uh, even Koryun back there on PC Engine, Great Battle 5, and. The big one, <laughs> Jesus. Magical Poppin' complete for about $2,000. So have fun with that. Uh, as we come up to this other case, that's not quite so drastic. How did that game get so pricey? But still, over 300 bucks for Samurai Pizza Cats. And, um, and then some less extreme stuff. Some of these Saturn games are like, you know, $30, $40 games. But uh, yeah, where have I been? when a copy of Magical Poppin' is a couple thousand dollars. Um, yeah, that's a lot of money. Uh, but we have some cool stuff in this case. Valis, some of the Rockman games, uh, Mother, things like that. These Rockman World games on Game Boy, those are pretty cool too. Um, but yeah, some pretty expensive stuff, especially, you know, for a hard off. Uh, but we got good stuff in this case, Gunspike, it's a fantastic game on the Dreamcast. I like it a lot. We've got other good stuff in here. There's some PC Engine and Dreamcast stuff. There's Hellfire S, which is cool. Some Tengai Makyo. Uh, Pop Full Mail, which is awesome. Gate of Thunder, Spriggan, Ninja Spirit, and uh, R-Type. Uh, so this is all cool. Nice stuff in these cases. Sokyo Gurentai, one of my favorite Saturn shooters. So that's nice, the uh, Salamander Deluxe Pack, Bulk Slash, which actually got maybe a few months ago and really been enjoying that game. Uh, but we move on to a whole bunch of box Super Famicom games. I'm going to let you take a look while I take a few sips off of my beer I've got here. So check out uh, these games. I'll be right back. at it again with some Goemon games. A whole bunch of them. Um, I'm not even familiar with this one I have in my hand right here. Um, Goemon 2, I've played quite a lot of and uh, really, really enjoy that game and the first Gambari Goemon. Um, but there's more. More, more, more. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho 2. Fun fighting game. Uh, Cosmo Gang the Puzzle. Fun puzzle game. So these are you know some cool, uh, inexpensive uh, Japan exclusive games, puzzlers, fighters, things like that. Um, but yeah, just uh, the amount of box Super Famicom games in here is uh, kind of staggering. Uh, this one, uh, one of the uh, Konami uh, pro wrestling games, sort of a um, quasi 3D kind of look to it. I've actually heard that that's a good one. So I'd be interested to uh, give that a try. Did not pick it up today though. And then just this massive wall of loose cards there. Hokuto no Ken 5, which I believe is one of the RPGs. Um, almost all of the Hokuto no Ken games from that, that era are uh, pretty bad. Uh, Samurai Spirits, though. 
like 10 bucks and it's it's a complete copy so that's good uh, for that uh, pretty good port of that game actually and the uh, Neketsu uh, like Kunio-kun baseball game on the Super Famicom another one that I believe was exclusive to Japan uh, and it's pretty cool if you like those Kunio-kun sports games uh, as we come over though to this just massive wall of loose Super Famicom games and uh, later we'll be seeing a lot of loose Famicom games and uh, typically what you'll see here is lots of games that are you know 300 yen on the low end and then usually no more than like a thousand yen or so so you can come and grab games here for like three bucks five bucks a piece and that's pretty cool uh, you know some value for you as we're looking at you know Poyo Poyo and all the Mario's and Final Fantasies you could ever want including this uh, Super Poyo Poyo which is very nice I believe this is what was converted into Kirby's Avalanche if I'm not mistaken Crayon Shin Chan 2 which you have not played I played the original Crayon Shin Chan and it was pretty fun isn't there a new one coming soon I think for the switch right so that's kind of cool and more 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 uh, so yeah from end to end basically this aisle has boxed games and loose games uh, the Mickey Tokyo Disney game it's pretty cool 500 yen uh, so like five bucks for this game is uh, not a bad deal actually um, and that's a pretty fun game again that's another one that was uh, exclusive to Japan uh, but you can pick it up for for pretty cheap and uh, have a lot of fun with it one of these sort of like Gachapon Gundam games I'm assuming one of the strategy games I don't know anything about it but they always have really attractive box art and then just all these loose games are sort of scattered around good stuff too it's Yoshi's Island, Donkey Kong Country, Street Fighter, Chrono Trigger, Rockman X, Dragon Quest, Star Fox, just, you know, Secret of Mana, just all these great games just sort of uh, haphazardly uh, placed there. And then uh, more good stuff. World Heroes, Yu Yu Hakusho, again, Chrono Trigger, no shortage of those. Uh, Gambari Goemon again, loose. And uh, that's nice. Most of those you can get for a few bucks. So that's good. Sonic Blast Man. Pretty good game. Uh, Sonic Blast Man 2 is the real expensive one, though. And uh, Tetris Battle Gaiden. One of my favorite Super Famicom exclusives. Probably my favorite Tetris game. Really, really good. I can uh, always recommend picking that one up. And Super Chinese World 3. Which, um... I played a few of these Super Chinese games. And uh, they've been pretty good. And uh, Kunio's Dodgeball for the Super Famicom. And I don't know, I don't recall if that one was released anywhere else either. But if it's Kunio and it's Dodgeball, you know it's good. And then uh, these, uh, loose carts, but they've got these little locks on there. Um, which, I don't know why. They're not really that much more valuable than the other ones. But we got like Poppin' Twin B. And we've got Area 88, which is a fantastic game. Some Rockman X2, Castlevania 4, Puzzle Bobble, uh, Popful Mail. Lots of good stuff here. Slightly more expensive games, uh, but nothing too crazy. And uh, a complete copy of Gambari Goemon 3, which I actually still have not played yet. Like I said, I played a lot of Gambari Goemon 2 recently, which is great. Uh, but I still need to try out the third game looks pretty good as we move on to this case with Game Boys and Game & Watch uh, yeah have a look around I'm gonna sip a little more of this, this cold beverage and uh, we'll be right back
A whole bunch of Kunio-kun games uh, put together. Neketsu Kakuto Densetsu, which is a uh, pretty fun two-on-two -two fighter. And we have Downtown Special, which is like a uh, feudal Japanese version of River City Ransom, and that's also really good. And then uh, Neketsu Hockey Club, which is uh, also just super fun. Great sports game. All three of those games were exclusive to Japan, and I believe all three of them at this point have been featured on Import Game of the Day. Because they're really good, so you can go and check all of those out. Uh, but again, like I said, lots, lots of loose Famicom games, just end to end. There's Kunio, and there's Dragon Ball Z, there's your Marios, and just uh, all kinds of stuff, including uh, the original Kunio game which is Renegade, I believe, in North America. Uh, but yeah, so lots of uh, lots of good stuff here, boxed, loose, whatever. Uh, usual prices apply. It's kind of like 300 on the low end, like 1,000 yen or more. 1,000 to 1,500 on the uh, high end for like the loose carts. The box games, though, those can be up to, you know, 20-something, 30-something bucks. Uh, Tiny Toon Adventures 2. Which is, is it, it's not Wacky Land, it's, uh, there's like a theme park. It's got a theme park motif to it. And, uh, that's a pretty fun game as well. Konami always did, uh, Tiny Toons Justice uh, with their games. So I do like me some Tiny Toons. And, hey, the cartoon as well. One of the best, uh, cartoons back in the day. Getting off school, going home, watching some Fox Kids. Uh, more of these games here where the box is all folded up. DuckTales and Captain Tsubasa, even though there's one there where the box is intact. I don't know why they did that. Uh, Famicom Jump, pretty interesting game. It's like a little RPG where you go to the Jump World and you can team up with all the different heroes from popular manga back in the day. So there's like Goku and Kenshiro and uh, I believe Captain Tsubasa is in that one as well. So it's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, lots lots more. Some of the stuff, like, super common, like the Final Fantasy games, there's always a ton of those, Dragon Quest. Well, there's other cool stuff there, like City Connection, which is fun, and uh, Binary Land, and good things like that. Gegege no Kitaro, Bomb Jack, Salamander, with its very cool clear case. Uh, that's one of my, probably one of my favorite NES games is Life Force. Really great game. Uh, but this stuff is, you know, it's kind of convenient when I come to pick up, like, uh, loose carts and stuff. Lots of things could be found for, like, 300, 500 yen. And uh, those are good for the uh, Patreon boxes uh, whenever I can get around to doing that. Been working a lot lately. Um, but, yeah, plenty of good stuff here. Um, but it's nice, you know, for, like, non-specific things. If you just want to grab, or even if you were just getting, like, a collection started... You just thought to yourself, you know what, I'd like to leave here with like 30 Famicom games. You can pick up stuff like Macross and Jaja Marukun, Excite Bike, all this stuff, Adventure Island. You can just grab like, I don't know, a whole bunch for like 300 yen a piece and uh, make out like a fat cat. And uh, the original Hokuto no Kid, which was not released on the NES, I believe the NES game was actually Hokuto no Kid 2. So that first one, I guess, was exclusive to Japan? Not sure. And we have some Famicom Disk games here, which I have to, uh, be honest, I'm not too familiar with the Disk System library. Um, I had a twin Famicom and le <laughs> left it at an ex-girlfriend's house, so you know what happened to that. Um, so yeah, the Famicom Disk library, not, uh, not too familiar with it, as we come to another cool case of stuff, so, uh, yeah, let me uh, back up again, get another shot off this beer, and you can check out this cool stuff. Power Glove. Oh, that's cool.
All right. Some PC Engine, pretty sparse though. Um, that's the thing about some of these uh, hard offs lately, especially some of the more popular ones. Oh, gotta mention this Cyber City Oedo 808. One of my favorite anime OVAs from back in the day. Uh, the game, not so great, but it's, it's an awesome anime. Um, but yeah, a lot of these more trafficked hard offs, um, they're kind of sparse on uh, things like this East 3. Fantastic game. Um, a lot of this, you know, PC Engine, Mega Drive, all that ends up in uh, glass cases. Fighting Street. Not such a great game, but, uh, yeah, love it anyway. Um, but yeah, when you go to the shelf, there's usually not going to be that much PC Engine, Mega Drive, Saturn, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of that uh, ends up behind glass, because those are just the big sort of collector's consoles these days, I guess. Mega Drive, PC Engine. Uh, but yeah, basically all the non-Nintendo and non-Sony stuff is, um, I guess, more highly collectible. I don't know, but there's there's always a lot less of it. I mean, as you can see, we just looked at two aisles just overflowing with Famicom and Super Famicom. And uh, you can take my word for it that there was a ton of PlayStation and PlayStation 2 as we look at Hokuto no Ken, aka the violent version of Last Battle. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just aisles overflowing with games versus, you know, a handful of games on a shelf when you're talking about uh, play, uh, PC Engine, Mega Drive stuff. As we look. On the other side of the aisle, a giant wall of PS1, which uh, is another console where uh, if you want to um, collect imports for it, you can walk into a hard off like this with like, I don't know, a hundred bucks and walk out with like, I don't know, a bunch of games, like, you know, 20 games or something, because you can find cheap stuff as we look at like Tron Bond and things like that. Some PlayStation games, you know. They're a little more rare, a little more elusive, so they're expensive. But if you're just looking for, um, you know, some fun games to play for cheap, you can get a lot on the PlayStation. This Chocobo collection right here. Nice and cheap. Got three games in it. Chocobo Racing, Chocobo Stallion, and Dungeon, I think. Or you can get a complete copy of Tekken 2 for three bucks. Because who doesn't like Tekken 2? Um, but yeah, PlayStation is a... Um, Another good console to uh, get into for prospective uh, import collectors um, because uh, lots lots of games on it are really cheap and especially like where the US or European counterpart is more expensive these days you'll probably find it cheaper on the Japanese PlayStation Star Gladiator you know three bucks can't go wrong with that that's a fantastic game Classic Fighter by Capcom, and speaking of, uh, Rival Schools for like 10 bucks, which is nice. Actually, when I, I remember buying Rival Schools brand new from a Walmart for 10 bucks when I was, what, 11 or 12 years old? And uh, loving it became one of my favorite fighting games ever, so 10 bucks, well worth it. Some random Inuyasha game. R4. One of my favorite racers ever. It's eight bucks. Pretty good for that. Uh, so yeah, you can see the difference. On one side of this aisle, a handful of PC Engine and Mega Drive games. The other side, tons of PS1 games. And then, you know, a little respectable little uh, grouping of Dreamcast games. There's Project Justice, Shinmu, Guilty Gear X for eight bucks complete and I believe this version the Dreamcast version was released only in Japan uh, so that's pretty cool and speaking of cool cool borders burn uh, which I like the cool borders games but they were kind of obsolete as soon as SSX hit the scene King of Fighters Dream Match 99 which is a good candidate for my favorite King of Fighters I think my favorite is still KOF 11 I really like that one, but uh, Dream Match 99 is really good too, because it's basically just an updated version of 98. Which 98 is a lot of people's favorite as well. Um, so yeah, we got all these Dreamcast games here. Bomber, heh <laughs> heh. 
I don't know what that is. Looks interesting though. Um, yeah, so we got some 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 Dreamcast games here. It's always nice to flip through some good old DC games, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which you can't unlock all the characters on it now, because a bunch of them required like online points you had to earn in the game by playing online, which is obviously not an option anymore. So thanks, Capcom. I cannot unlock all the characters on my Dreamcast MVC 2 now. And then Saturn, again, there's some cool stuff for the Saturn here. There's King of Fighters 96, all these Sakura Wars games, Fighters Mega Mix, and Poyo Poyo 2. Good, you know, good stuff, but, you know, super common stuff. Um, again, a lot of the more uh, sought after Saturn stuff, that's going to be under glass, as we saw earlier. Uh, there were a lot of really good Saturn games behind glass. But, you know, cool stuff here. Saturn version of Biohazard, which is a really good port of that game. And, uh, so on and so forth. Sega Saturn. Which, uh, is one of my favorite consoles to collect for, but again, one of the more expensive to collect for. Warcraft 2, which I like a lot, was not a PC gamer at all back in the day, but, uh, my friend across the street, uh, Dan, he was a PC gamer, and that was one of his favorite games, and I played it a lot. I really like Warcraft 2. Uh, great, great game. Of course you want to play as the Orcs. Way more fun. Uh, Clockwork Knight. Really great platformer on the Saturn. And uh, some other things I'm not too familiar with. And a ton of copies. Well, not a ton. Like four or five copies of Christmas Nights. Those are five bucks a piece. And Vampire Hunter. And Ultraman. Some cool stuff. So yeah, some some decent titles. Area 51. Which is uh, was a favorite, always a favorite at the movie theater. Waiting for your movie to start. Go to that little lobby and play some Area 51. Uh, and then last but not least. We've got an aisle with consoles and accessories, things like that, including this box Super Scope. Good condition, too. And it's like 20 bucks. So that's nice. And uh, more and more, more. Lots of fighting sticks here. And uh, little oddities and things like that. Tyco drums. Some other things I'm not too familiar with. But yeah, lots of different variations of Tyco drums, some light guns. Some things to play Densha de Go with, apparently. Uh, which I'm not exactly a Densha de Go guy. Cordless Handycam Station System. What the hell that is? Uh, you you got me. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's a recording device. I don't know. Well, obviously it's a recording device. It's a cam. Um, and more consoles here. Mostly like Playstations and things like that. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this... Uh, little portion of the video so hey let's get the hell out of here all right so that's it for the hard off here in hot Yoji. it's really awesome i've been here a few times before it's always really nice coming in here tons of games uh prices are typically pretty good uh had a good look around got a big old bag of games right here some for myself and some for some other people and i'd say overall it was a very successful day of game hunting so now it's getting windy and cold and dark and I am ready to get the hell out of here get some warm food in me and uh, head back home with my big bag of games to play. Uh, so thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little game hunting trip and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Everybody, Jim here, and uh, hey, have a look at this. I was in the neighborhood of Ikebukuro earlier, yesterday I think, and uh, looky looky, 
decided to stop in to the Ikebukuro Super Potato. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at what I came across in here. You always know you're in a Super Potato when there's just like lots of gaming crap stuck all over the walls. I love it. Just uh, the atmosphere. Get ready for the prices though. <laughs> Yeesh! Uh, as we're looking at this um, money case right here, they had several money cases in this uh, this uh, location, but there's good stuff in there. There's like Macross and uh, stone protectors? Okay. Actually, now that I'm looking at this playing this back, I was like, what the hell? Stone protectors? Undercover Cops, which is actually a game I still haven't played yet. I haven't even played a ROM, but um, looks good. Looks like a good uh, beat em up. And we got some Famicom, like Lickle, aka uh, Little Samson, I believe. That's a pricey one no matter where you are, but I think, yeah, the NES version is probably way more expensive. And uh, loose Famicoms, uh, Famicom games, and then we have some consoles here as well. So you get your Nintendo 64s, your Super Famicoms, and GameCubes. All your Nintendo needs uh, can be met. Um, this is interesting. Usually when I uh, am recording these voiceovers, uh, it's later at night and I've been drinking some beer. But uh, today actually it's the opposite. It's the morning and I've been drinking some coffee. Look at that, $1,000 almost for Battle Mania Daikinjo and over 1000 for Comic Zone. Oh my goodness. I mean, these are some good games, but $1,000? Lord have mercy. I may never own any of those games again because those prices are just insane. Like, you would only buy them just to sell them, but then how do you how do you look someone in the face and be like, hey, I buy, you need to now pay me more than $1,000 for this so I can make a profit. Uh, we got some AES games. Boy, this whole thing just keeps perpetuating itself. More, more, more. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, no, no doubt those were some... Uh, Fantastic games here. I, you know, there's some PS Vita and all that. Who cares? But uh, we got some cool um, uh, strategy guides and things like that. That's that's very nice. Love the artwork on these. Always nice to come across these. Some Super Metroid and all that. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, morning now. I've had my coffee. So the I don't know the tempo to this video. Uh, hello uh, there, Blues, aka Proto Man. And some PS ones, yeah. The um, I don't know. I think the the difference between Jim drinking beer and Jim drinking coffee might become pretty apparent. We've got PS fours and Super Potato. For, for what purpose? Who comes into Super Potato looking for a PS four? Get that out of here. I uh, got something on the TV. Whatever the hell that is. Um, but let's look at some games, because uh, there's plenty of that. Uh, because unlike the um. As we look at a bunch of loose Famicom games, all the Capcom stuff grouped together is good. Uh, Super Potato usually does that. They group a lot of uh, games together by developer, not necessarily by like genre or something like that. Um, and we can find some Rescue Rangers when there's danger. It's like 30 bucks for a loose Rescue Rangers. Yeesh. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, this, unlike the uh, Super Potato in Akiba, uh, this one is just one one floor. Everything's stuck together on one floor, so it's pretty cramped. You can probably tell by some of these um, some of these camera angles that I'm a little bit squished. Uh, we're looking at some Technos Japan games and some little mini things and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, uh, have a look around. I'm actually going to take a little bit of a coffee break while you check out some of these cool games, and we'll be right back.
having a look at some PS2, which is nice. So we have a Shooting Love here, Trizeal. I actually recently featured the Dreamcast version of Trizeal on Import Game of the Day. Good game. Uh, good shoot 'em up. We got a lot of uh, shooters right here, actually. We got some Twinkle Star sprites. I guess a sequel to the original, or is it just the original? I don't know. I do love Twinkle Star sprites, again, on the Dreamcast. Never played it on the PS2. Espgaluda. Another one, again, I've played Espgaluda 2 on the Xbox 360 and loved it. Never played the PS2 original, though. Maybe something I need to look into. And we have a bunch of the Neo Geo collections and uh, uh, things like that right here, like Metal Slug Complete. Look at all those Metal Slug games in uh, one uh, convenient package. That's really cool. And there's like Art of Fighting and Fatal Fury, a bunch of the King of Fighters games. Hey, we have some, looks like some competitive play. I don't know. Whatever the hell that's a video of on a tiny little video screen. And then some of these cool little acrylic things. A lot of this stuff, all this comes from um, when they have the pop-up shops. They've had a ton of the Neo Geo pop-up shops. And those little acrylic figures are always a, a staple of those. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And we have here some handheld stuff. Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. we got our Rockman World games. And uh, some DS, all that. Which apparently I decided to bypass. I don't know. <laughs> okay. We're done with that. We're looking at another money case. Um, this one has like a lot of PlayStation stuff. And you can see like Panzer Bandit. Gegege no Kitaro. And uh, other various cool things. And then the PC Engine games. Uh, blowing me away. There's Tatsujin, Kiki Kai Kai. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. Rainbow Islands, which I like a lot. And uh, yeah. Very good stuff. Rainy Blaster, not so good. That game is just super expensive for um, for the sake of rarity, I guess. I don't know. And then these Saturn games. Including all these shoot -ups. Blast Wind, Hyper Duel, Battle Garega. Um, yeah, Metal Black. Uh, some of it pretty damn expensive. Although I did actually pick up a couple of the Saturn shooters here. Uh, one in the case and then one from off the shelf. Crow, Street Fighter Zero Three, Really good stuff. It's just you need some deep pockets. Uh, a request, actually, for someone. So you know who you are. You got uh, your Saturn shooters this month. Um, and some Dreamcast stuff, including, you know, Street Fighter. Uh, you know, I'd like to have that. It's a lot to pay, though, for... You know, it's I, I have a bunch of cop versions of Street Fighter 2 already. Um, we got some consoles here. Lots of consoles. Standalone Famicom Disk Systems Famicoms, including... Um, if we can take a look. These are AV modded original Famicoms. They're about 90 bucks. And, uh, yeah. So, that's cool. You can have an original, you know, model Famicom. And, um, but it, you know, works with AV. So, in case you don't want to buy the, uh, you know, the Model 2, like the NES top loader looking one. Uh, and this, this is pretty cool. One of the, I guess, old Nintendo Pong consoles. One of the TV game consoles they released before they made the Famicom. So that's cool. If you like your Pong. I've never actually played one of those. I've never played a Pong machine ever, actually. But we got some of the uh, Famicom top loaders in various condition and the uh, the Super Famicom 2. Some 3DOs, which I was a 3DO owner before. And, uh, you know, not such a, a terrible system. Terrible games on it, but the system itself is pretty cool. Um, as we come up to some... Uh, Super Famicom, which is uh, another console. It's like Famicom, Super Famicom, Saturn, Dreamcast, PC Engine. Those are the ones I'm usually always wrapped up in. Not just because I like them, but because I also get a lot of requests from people to send them that kind of stuff. But we're looking at uh, Nintendo first party games, Capcom games, uh, all this good stuff uh, divvied up by, again, a developer. And these cool little figures and stuff. Some of the uh, Rockman things just sort of haphazardly stuck up there. Like, yeah, yeah, stick this with the, the Super Famicom games. And we've got a lot of box stuff, including this caught my eye right away. Some Kiki Kai Kai, a.k.a. Pocky and Rocky. Um, great game. Boxed, you know, covers pretty damn faded. And those are an expensive couple of games as well. But we got lots of Capcom and Konami goodness. Area 88. The Final Fight games, Magic Sword, which I love, Choma Kaimura, some Rockman goodness, just, uh, you know, what can you complain about? And then all this 
I mean, we got all these Bomberman games, beautiful, and then all this Konami stuff, Herodias, Contra. What a, a wall of excellence. And then uh, one of these, these are cool. These um, sort of uh, repro kind of collections of games, I think is a bunch of Jalico games. I'm not sure, I think Columbus Circle puts these out, or someone does, but um, that's pretty cool. So you can buy these sort of all-in-one kind of, you know, they have like five or six games in them, so that's pretty cool. Kind of like the Genesis six-pack back in the day. Uh, Mickey's Magical Adventure 3, cool game. Japan exclusive, if I'm not mistaken, so that's nice. And we got a, a bunch more here. Uh, I'm actually going to sip some more coffee, so... Uh, Check out whatever the hell pops up. Uh, some PS1. Hey, how about that? Uh, so I'm going to take my little coffee break, and we'll be right back. Last Resort, Factory Sealed, get out of here. Actually, they have a bunch of Factory Sealed Neo Geo CD games in here, which is uh, pretty cool, but I have no use for Factory Sealed games. Quackshot, love it. E-SWAT, love it. Um, Echo, don't love it. Alien Storm, love it. Um, yeah, so Factory Sealed games, that's pretty cool, you know, for collector's purposes, but yeah, I like to play my games. Gunstar Heroes, classic. Great game. You could pick it up for what, like, what was that? Like 50 bucks? Complete and in great condition. I think for Gunstar Heroes, at least, that's yeah, that's not so unreasonable. Um, Dragon Ball Z Buyu Retsuden, which is also, you know, pretty good. It's kind of like the Mega Drive um, version of one of the Super Butoden games, and I like that a lot. And Battle Golf for Yui, that's been uh, a game that I've been enjoying for. A long time. Featured that on the channel a long time ago. A golf RPG. Can't go wrong with that. As we look at... Oh boy, Dreamcast. One of my faves. Uh, we got some good stuff here. Lots of Capcom stuff. We got our shoot 'em ups We got stuff like Gunbird 2. Gunspike, which is a favorite of mine. Uh, Project Justice, which is another favorite. Uh, Dreamcast, baby. The hits just keep on coming. Especially if you're a Capcom fan. And especially if you're a Neo Geo SNK fan, you got Mark of the Wolves, bunch of King of Fighters ports. You gotta love it. And some crazy taxi. Well, that's hard on the throat. <laughs> they shouldn't do that that too much. And Saturn. Another one of my favorites to collect for these days. Gunbird, Strikers, Cotton, Good Lord Darius. The shooters never end. And a Sagata Sanshiro game. The man himself gets his own game, and that's lovely. He deserves it for being the, the hero we don't deserve, but the hero we need. Um, and yeah, interesting to see some some factory-sealed Saturn games as well. Like, you know, were, were these just sitting in a warehouse somewhere? I have no idea. Uh, this is pretty cool. The Nights into Dreams bundled with the uh, 3D controller. That's nice. The 3D controller, pretty cool. 
works well enough with Knights. And I am, I'm actually a fan of Knights. I like that game a lot. Some people don't. Some people do. I actually, I have a, some friends that really, for whatever reason, they just don't like that game. They think it sucks hardcore. I don't get it. And then we got a Virtua Boy here for whoever, for the weirdos out there who like Virtua Boy. Um, and we got some Saturn consoles, Dreamcast consoles, including the uh, Sakura Wars. That one didn't used to be so expensive, but it is it is now. That's quite the collector's item these days. We got some PC Engine consoles, core graphics, and they come in various condition and bundle with controllers and hookups and other things. And then just a whole bunch of sticks and things piled up. Mega Drives. Actually, Mega Drives kind of hold their value too now. I think about it. like Mega Drives and PS2s. Wow, that's a handsome Mario. <laughs> some uh, game changer thing. A whole ton of just little Kirby's. Cooking up trouble, baby. So if you want a tiny little Kirby and you got four bucks in your pocket, uh, that's what they are there for. All the Kirby you can handle, baby. All the Kirby and more. I'm switching into a kind of a Patrick Warburton kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't drop by the PC Engine section. We've got games and consoles. Good stuff like Splatterhouse and PC Genjin, we've got some dual R's and RX's here. They're pretty expensive. They're hundreds of dollars, but if you're, you know, if you've got the money for them, I don't think you're gonna care because you're gonna want one because they're awesome. But yeah, we got lots of good stuff. Salamander, I actually really like the PC Engine port of Salamander. Plays really well. Though I do prefer some Gradius 2. They're super riding for the PC Engine CD. And speak of the devil, Gradius 2 on PC Engine CD. 40 some odd bucks. That is an amazing game, as is Zero Wing. Most people think Zero Wing, they think Mega Drive, PC Engine got a good port. Download 2 is an absolutely insane game where you blow up Hitler at the end from inside his own mind. Some Twin B, some Doraemon, some Dragon Spirit, so much good stuff. Anyway, um, that's more or less going to do it for this uh, look around Super Potato and Ikebukuro. Hope you enjoyed. I hope the coffee helped. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, everybody. Take care. Goodbye. Hey, everybody. Jim here, and uh, it is a warm, sunny August afternoon, and I'm on uh, my summer break right now from work, so I figured what better time to do some game hunting. So right now, I'm on my way to the train station, and we are going to uh, take a little ride out west. It's going to be about an hour from here, and we're going to the city of Hamura, where uh, I actually used to live in that area. There's uh, a couple of good places to do some game hunting, so that's what we're about to go do. So sit back, uh, relax, and enjoy the ride. Uh, we're going to head out to Hamura, and we're going to do some game hunting, and we're going to have a good time. And we're going to enjoy this uh, lovely summer afternoon. So let's do this.
everybody. Okay. Uh, finally, I made my way to Hamura. It was about a one hour train ride. And I gotta say, I haven't been out here in a couple of years. Uh, I don't know, I, don't, I usually, I don't go this far west anymore, even though I used to live out here. Uh, but what can I say? I'm like uh, Tokyo city scum now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to live out here and the places I'm going to today, I used to go to like pretty much every weekend. Holy crap. We got some road work going on. So I think for the sake of everyone's ears, I'll pack this in and pack it back out in a bit. Just sit tight. Okay, we're all clear. No more construction. Um, uh, but yeah, this is Hamura. I uh, used to live in this general area when I was uh, stationed at the Air Force Base that isn't uh, too far from here. And yeah, pretty much every weekend I would, usually on Saturday after recovering from Friday night, I would get in my car and drive first to this hobby off that I'm about to go to and then to the hard off that I'll be going to a little later and I would just pick up tons of games every weekend and anyone who's been a viewer of the channel for like a really long time like on the off chance you've been watching for like a decade <laughs> um, you'll find these places very familiar um, so I'm happy to be back here again. It's been a couple of years since I've even come this far. Um, but uh, it's good to see kind of like some familiar territory, even if uh, it's pretty desolate right now. Uh, for obvious reasons, not too many people out and about. But um, anyway, I'm going to head on to the hobby off and we should be in there pretty soon looking for games and I'm ready to get inside uh, any building at all because it's a hot one today folks August cicadas bright bright Sun the whole nine so uh, sit tight we will be there shortly okay and here we are coming up on the hobby off which typically hobby offs focus as the name implies, on hobby-related things, trading cards, action figures, things like that. Uh, but this one, in particular, always had plenty of uh, games as well, and consoles. Uh, so we're gonna have a look around, hopefully find some good stuff. So let's enjoy a leisurely stroll through this hobby off. Let's do it. GameCube. Super Mario's highest GameCube is これがスーパージャンプだ。空へ、海へ、自由時代に飛び回れ。エンターテイメントの頂点へ。ただ、任天堂ゲームキューブ、スーパーマリオサンシャイン。ゲームキューブ、新価格 <笑> Finally, getting started in this hobby off, starting with some really cool handhelds here, including uh, that Persona Q 3DS, which uh, when people saw the uh, photos I shared from here on Instagram, I actually had a couple of people saying, hey, I want that 3DS, uh, and some Neo Geo Pockets, which are always cool, but this I thought was especially awesome, boxed PC Engine Core Graphics 2, 16,500 yen, and 7700 for the original core graphics loose uh, so that's very reasonable 
And for a high Saturn, Hitachi Saturn, 19,800 yen. And that's kind of a, um, I guess, a more desirable model of the Saturn. That's very cool. Uh, we have another case here with a bunch of consoles in it. This, apparently for the PS4, I had initially thought it was the slime controller that had been released for the PS2, but I guess I was wrong. And we've got even a handful of AES games. Nothing uh, out of the ordinary, really. KOF 94 through 96, but it's always nice to see Neo Geo. And we've got some Switch stuff here. Some Amiibos and things. Stuff I'm not too familiar with. And the gold Famicom Minis with all the Shonen Jump stuff. And some Famicom and Super Famicom Minis. So that's all nice. Uh, we have the console aisle here. Always fun to peruse consoles. So there's... Uh, a bunch of Wii U's, I see these everywhere, um, they kind of just sit on a lot of these store shelves. We have N64 boxed, 5,500 yen, uh, but it looks like there's no AV cables, but that's usually not such a big deal, because um, you can use uh, easily find AV cables for it. 6,600 for this very nice little Dreamcast bundle with two controllers, VMU, so that's good price on that. And then 4,400 for these N64 loose decks um, which again finding the the power supply and AV adapters for those not too terribly challenging and a dead or alive 5 4400 for this Hori stick for the PS3 okay and we have a Neo Geo stick 2 uh, also for the PS3 so if you want to play uh, Neo Geo fighters on your PS3 with a legit Neo Geo joystick there you go and here we have a little bit of a money case so we've got a lot of uh, loose Super Famicom cards in here good stuff including Parodius EDF Ninja Gaiden trilogy and then uh, even a couple of PC Engine games Kiki Kai Kai which is a very fun little top-down action game and 3300 for PC Genjin aka Bonk's Adventure so I'm not gonna break the bank on that one so that's pretty nice and over here we have some Nice stuff. Rockman Mega World, aka I think Wily Wars in English. Uh, great game, but they only had it loose. And we have some box stuff like DuckTales Airwolf for 5500 Calling All, Jan Michael Vincents, and Gunnack and Salamander. Some good shoot 'em ups for the console. And uh, some Rockman 6. Loose copies of Salamander, Bionic Commando. Uh, pretty cool stuff there. And then a bunch of this boxed Super Famicom 8800. For Rockman and Forte, 6600 for Axley, which is an amazing game. Always nice to find stuff like that boxed. Uh, Final Fight Guy, Rockman X3, Parodius, uh, The Great Battle 4, which is a very fun uh, platform with little SD characters. Like that a lot. Some uh, Parodius, whichever one that is. I think there's like three or four of those. And Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension, which uh, a lot of people say is the best of the 16 bit DBZ games. Uh, it, it just might be. It is very good. Uh, coming up on some PS3, PS2. Didn't see too much I liked, but there is, um, I believe in English it was released as Blood Will Tell. And some of the KOF games like 98, Neo Wave, and the Nests Collection, which I think has like three or four games on it. So that's very cool, but uh, this stood out to me. Gradius 3 and 4 in one single uh, game, which I'm a huge Gradius fan. Gradius 3 is my favorite. Um, so this was an instant uh, pickup. Knew I wanted that right away. Whether that stays with me or not for very long is uh, anyone's guess, but uh, for at least for the time being, I get to uh, test it out, quote unquote. And uh, DS and 3DS, so, you know, most people know I'm not too familiar with uh, handhelds. Uh, Jump Ultimate Stars, something I thought looked cool. I've never actually played this one, but. Uh, I, I did grow up as a kid being a fan of that era of anime and manga. And I believe this is Rockman ZX. It looks like it says Advanced. So that's pretty cool. I actually have not played any of these uh, DS or 3DS Rockman games, but they look pretty cool. And uh, they're not so terribly expensive. Moving on uh, to PS1, which uh, is something I'm a little more into uh, collecting for right now. We have this Common Rider. Common Rider. Uh, Agito game. There's no shortage of Kamen Rider games on the PS1 and PS2. Um, if you're a Kamen Rider fan, there's a lot to choose from out there. And then we have, uh, what does it say, Parlor Parlor King? You wanna 
So you want to run your own uh, pachinko parlor, do you? Well, uh, boy, I got a game for you. Uh, you. You can simulate running a pachinko parlor. Every kid's dream. Who did not want to run a pachinko parlor when they were a lad or a young lass? Um, I don't know. I, I didn't. Did you? Uh, Rockman 6, uh, Complete Works. So, um, the original six 8-bit Rockman games were all re-released on the PS1 back in the day with some cool bonus features and things, so those are always fun to come by. And Rockman X4, one of my favorites uh, in the entire series, I would say X and X4, Rockman 5, uh, and Rockman 8, kind of controversially. Those are sort of some of my top Rockman games. Uh, we have some Capcom fighters here. X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Capcom vs. SNK Pro. And this, uh, interesting maybe to some people, Clayman Clayman, a.k.a. The Neverhood, which was a point-and-click PC game back home, but uh, got a PS1 release in uh, Japan. And in fact, even after the second game, Skull Monkeys, there's a third game that was released in Japan only. And this... The Jigsaw Puzzle, literally a budget title where you can put together jigsaw puzzles, which is, you know, I guess understandable. Maybe you don't have a lot of room for all those puzzles in your home, you know, all those big boxes they come in. Uh, here was kind of disappointing, their Dreamcast and Saturn, they didn't have really much of anything of interest, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, but again, this is a hobby off. So typically, hobby offs don't have very much in the way of games at all. So I was lucky to find what I did. But yeah, that was disappointing. This, on the other hand, for the Xbox 360, little game called Phantom Breaker that you may or may not have heard of. It's a pretty fun uh, 2D fighter that uh, has kind of a unique combo system for a 2D fighter. Usually you don't find that, that gameplay style in that genre, but a good game nonetheless. As we move on, uh, to some stuff I'm uh, quite a lot more familiar with. We got uh, Nintendo. So we got some of our boxed N64 games, including Puyo Puyo Sun 64, which is a great game. I love uh, Puyo Puyo in general, but Sun is probably my favorite. We got this big uh, selection here of DBZ games, including Super Butoden 2, which, again, a lot of people regard this one as the best of these 16-bit games, just because it's fun and the character selection is nice. Uh, they're all good, but they have all of the Super Butoden games there. And uh, more good stuff here, including Dragon Quest and Torneko no Daiboken. Just sort of a little dungeon crawler with uh, Torneko from Dragon Quest IV. Um, which, again, I believe this was Japan exclusive, but it is fun. A little more of a, a light game in the Dragon Quest series. With a very popular character. So good stuff, for sure. As we uh, peruse more and more boxed games, including uh, Super Bomberman 3 which I think was all the ones after the first one are Japan exclusive. Act Razor, this Sailor Moon S, um, the full title is very tiny. One of the one of the uh, puzzle games though, which, um, you know, those are fun. I prefer the beat em ups, but uh, you can't go wrong with a good puzzler. And we've got some more nice stuff up here, including Choma Kaimura, AKA Super Goals and Ghosts, good stuff. Uh, Ranma 1 half, I believe this one is Chogi Rambuhen, which is just one of three of the 2D fighters. I know at least one, maybe two of these were released on the SNES. I'm not exactly sure which ones, um, but there it is. And then Blues, Roku Denashi Blues, which is a game I've talked about in the past. It's kind of an adventure fighting game, kind of hybrid. Uh, it's got a you know fun little story mode in it, and it is a fighter. It's a very bare bones fighter, but it's kind of charming in its own way. As we carry on, Gradius 3 and Slam Dunk 2, um, popular anime and manga series. You'd think this would be great for like an NBA jam or something, but nope. It is more of kind of a, a strategy game, I guess, judging by the back of the box. And it's 990 yen, about 9 bucks. Uh, and then we have the third of the Yu Yu Hakusho games on the Super Famicom. Uh, also a strategy game. There are actually four Yu Yu Hakusho games on the Super Famicom. Two of them are strategy games and two of them are fighters. And they're all pretty cool. Definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of the series. We've got some more Puyo Puyo, including Super Puyo Puyo, Puyo Puyo 2, and then this one I found uh, pretty interesting. Super Nazo Puyo, 
which uh, Nazo, meaning secret. I wasn't exactly sure what this one was, but uh, there's a lot of delicious looking food on the cover. Is that beef stew or curry? What is that? Have a little beef stew with your Puyo Puyo, why not? Um, Tales of Fantasia, I believe. Uh, which, uh, good, I'm a fan of the Tell series, I haven't played that one though. This one, uh, Mobile Suit Z Gundam, um, this is not one of the Gundam fighters on the Super Famicom. Um, those are a lot of fun, but there are a lot of strategy Gundam and SD Gundam type games on the Super Famicom. Um, so if you love Gundam, but you don't exactly like strategy games, those you could probably take a pass on. We have a limited supply of GameCube games, but kind of the essentials, we got Biohazard and Mario, there's some One Piece, Naruto, so good stuff indeed, but we have our loose Super Famicom games, which uh, spare you the hours of digging through them all, but this game, uh, Nangoku Shonen Papua-kun, uh, that's a fun little uh, platformer for the Super Famicom, that's one that uh, doesn't come up a lot, a very nice Japanese exclusive by Enix, a fun game that I've covered in the past, Poppin' Twinbee, Another fantastic game, great shoot 'em up for the Super Famicom. With a torn label on the back, that's too bad. Uh, I believe this was recently released for the Switch, though. So if you have a Switch, you can pick it up in the eStore and enjoy. Uh, Gogo Akman 3, uh, which I've covered all of the Gogo Akman games on this channel, and they are some really fun platformers. Again, all of them released exclusively in Japan. They're definitely worth checking out. Go have a look at some Gogo Akman if you uh, feel so inclined. Uh, a small selection of PC Engine games here. They didn't have too much, but some of it was pretty good. We've got Fire Pro Wrestling 2, which is super cheap. That's always a few bucks. Um, and we have Yokai Dochuki Shadowland, which is a very fun but short little platformer by Namco that I enjoy a lot. Again, another one I've covered on the channel. A little more in-depth, so you can uh, check that out at some point if you are so inclined. Uh, here we have, what is this? It's oh, Obochamakun. Uh, I've always forget the little guy. Yeah, it's uh, Obochamakun. No idea. I actually never played that one, but uh, Namco, interesting cover. Can't go wrong there. Doraemon. Just one of a couple of Doraemon games released for the... PC Engine, and those are usually pretty cool. And Gradius, this was the big find uh, of 2,000 yen. So for just under 20 bucks, my favorite version of the original Gradius for the PC Engine. And uh, you cannot go wrong with that. And then some uh, some Neketsu Koko Dodgeball, Super Dodgeball, uh, for those of you who are familiar with it on the NES. There's a great port for the PC Engine. So there you go. Uh, we have some cool boxed Famicom stuff down here, including Bomberman 2, which is uh, pretty cheap. Again, a game that usually you can find it boxed and complete for like under 20 bucks. And I think its U.S. counterpart is very expensive. So if you're thinking about switching over to uh, imports, that's one to look for. You can save a bundle and still get the same great game. But uh, with a very cute little Famicom box with some very nice artwork on it. As we look at all these loose Famicom games, again, I'll spare you the uh, long, long period, but uh, we have Captain Tsubasa 2, the Captain Tsubasa games, pretty cool, by Tecmo, very cinematic soccer games, not as all, not at all uh, arcadey as you might expect, and we've got some Jaja Marukun, those are always fun, good stuff by Jalico, uh, can never have too much jo <laughs> Jaja Marukun, I guess. Um, but as we look at all these Famicom games, it looks almost like a candy aisle. It's so colorful. My retinas are melting. Uh, we got some Rockman 2 and 3. Love the cover art on those. Just great stuff. Star Soldier and some Dragon Quest, Yoshi, all these good things. Rygar. Uh, lots and lots of great games. And most of it pretty cheap, Commando. Lots of the classics. Um, but anyway, this is winding down. Uh, I picked up a shit ton of games. Oh my god, I swore. I can't believe it. Hey, look, Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja. For those of you who didn't know, I'm... Oh my god, I'm a bad boy. Uh, anyway, let's get out of here. Let's go outside and take a look at uh, what I got, maybe. I don't know if I recorded that. I'm so forgetful these days. Anyway, let's get the hell out of here. Okay, all done in the hobby off. 
That was nice. That was very pleasant. Um, I got a nice big bag of games. Some very cool stuff. PlayStation, PS2, Famicom, Super Famicom, PC Engine. It was, uh, all in all, I'd say it was a success. Anyway, wow, it's starting to get a little overcast right now. Not quite as sunny as it was when I got here. Uh, anyway, I am going to go to another hard off that's probably about a 10, 15 minute walk down the street. Um, but I think first I'm going to get some lunch. I'm kind of hungry. Uh, game hunting builds an appetite. Anyway, um, come back at some point for another uh, game hunting video, I guess, at a different hard off location. So until then, uh, take care and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye, everybody. Jim here. Um, right now, I'm in the neighborhood of Okachimachi, uh, which is a neighborhood directly adjacent to uh, Akihabara. That little overpass might look familiar to some of you King of Fighters fans. Um, here today because there is actually what looks like a pretty big hard off in this neighborhood that I've never been to before. So I'm here to pay my first visit there and uh, hopefully find uh, some good stuff. Google Maps has been really helpful, like all the pictures you can look at on Google Maps so I can see which hard offs actually have like a nice little selection of retro games. Uh, so we're gonna take a short walk to this hard off and then we're gonna dig around through some games, hopefully find some good stuff. So uh, stick around, we'll be there momentarily. So that was actually a lot closer to the station than I thought. It's actually only like a two minute walk. So that's pretty cool. Um, what we have here apparently is not just a hard off. It's a hard off, hobby off combination place. So we've got all this stuff, trading cards, toys, plastic models, things like that. And we've got uh, games and audio equipment and things. Just right out here in front of the store, there's a core graphics with the CD unit and interface unit. I guess they're just collecting dust. Uh, it's kind of a shame. Uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna get in this place. I'm not particularly interested in uh, the figures and things, but we're gonna look for some retro games. So let's not dilly dally let's not tarry let's get some games shooting with shinji dai no makuake jinrui ga ima da katsu de taiken shie na katta kuzen desu mo no inazuma ga hashiru super cd rom rom de kageki ni toshio gate of thunder by hadasan
getting started in this lovely little heart off. It sounds weird now that I say that out loud. Lovely little heart off. Uh, we got a case here with some switch and switch light, DS, things like that. Not really what I was here for though. Uh, as we're gonna see, there, there was an impressive amount of uh, retro stuff uh, crammed into this uh, little space here. So, um, getting started with some PS1 games. They had some uh, nice things in the, to choose from here, including some good old Uno. Who doesn't? Who doesn't like Uno? I certainly do. Ace Combat 3, which uh, was the first Ace Combat game I played, actually, and I really liked it. And it's only like 500 yen. Uh, which, uh, the exchange rate right now, yen to dollars, is, is pretty damn good. Uh, you're saving like 12% if you do that uh, exchange on pretty much everything. Crime Crackers, I'm pretty sure I've played that in the past. I think that's some sort of first person, sort of action-y kind of game. Uh, but I don't think I have that in the collection anymore. That's one of those those oldies I probably sold last time I was in the US. Kizuati on this uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 uh, means there's some damage to it, so the price is down a little bit, but uh, that's being sold for like a uh, thousand yen, which is like, uh, right, I think right now that's like a little under nine dollars. That's, that's pretty good. That's a really great game. Uh, Common Rider V3 which I'm not terribly familiar with, but it, it does have uh, one of those little blue things in there. Puyo Puyo, and that's a nice Puyo Puyo game and some biohazard stuff. If it has that little blue tag inside the plastic wrap, uh, that means that the game is behind the counter. I guess it's, it's too precious to just leave out on the shelf, uh, so it's, uh, it's just too valuable. So they've, they've got it behind the counter uh, somewhere. One of the uh, Spectral Force games. Pretty cool. Pretty cool series there. Um, but yeah, uh, loads of PS2 stuff. Uh, most of this pretty cheap. King of Fighters 11, which is one I like a lot. That's uh, 16 50 for that. Um, which, you know, KOF 11 is one of, if not my favorite, KOF game. I mean, there's other, you know, really great ones too. 98, Dream Match, all that stuff. Um, yeah, Gunslinger Girl. I guess they took, uh, you know, the character of Matilda from The Professional and just turned her into a whole series. Um, some Kinikuman Ultimate Muscle, one of those games. Uh, I've played uh, a few of those, a few of the Kinikuman, like, one-on-one -on -one fighting slash wrestling type games. They're usually pretty fun, very arcadey. Rockman X7. Not the best Rockman game. Not everybody's favorite by a long shot. Not a lot of fans of Axel out there, but still. Rockman and uh, not too terribly expensive. Um, but we've got uh, Vita games here, which is nice. Some Fate and some Ys. All that good stuff. Uh, stuff like this, like Vita, PSP, PS2, uh, PS3, all that stuff. You, you can usually find like a ton of that at any uh, hard off or book off or anywhere you go really because uh, that stuff is recent and uh, sold like hotcakes there's copies of stuff everywhere we got some uh, uh, 360 games there very limited selection of 360 no secret that uh, Xbox doesn't exactly fly off the shelves in Japan uh, and that's okay but we got a lot of DS, 3DS, Wii, all that stuff if I'm perusing if I'm uh, going over it a little quickly it's because that's not really what I'm in the market for right now. I'm looking for that, that old stuff. 64-bit and under, baby. Uh, some Snowbow Kids by Atlas. Very fun. Good stuff. So just a handful of N64 games here. N64, historically not my favorite console, but uh, undeniably some classics for it. We got some Switch as well, like Astral Chain, which I still haven't played, but I've heard uh, really great stuff about. But when it comes to uh, my Switch, there's certain things I've been playing a lot of. As we look at some box Super Famicom games here, looking lovely. A lot of the first party stuff up front and center. Uh, but no, just like playing a lot of the East games on Switch and, uh, you know, replaying like Zelda and things like that. Seiken Densetsu 3, which I think I said was like the best Super Famicom game that uh, was only released in Japan. Uh, Ganbare Goimon, the first one, which did get a U.S. release as uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja, and I do believe. 
But the sequels, however, did not get an international release. Muscle Bomber, great game, aka Saturday Night Slam Masters, and I can't decide what is a better title. Dragon Ball Z Super Butoden 3. Super Butoden games, not bad games, and usually really cheap. Regardless, you find them boxed, you find them, you find them loose. Uh, you're not gonna spend a whole lot of money on those. Again, Dragon Ball Z. Really big property, sold lots. We've got some Puyo Puyo games, some Donkey Kong, and uh, some Bonk. A little bit of Super Genjin. Uh, so that's nice. Who doesn't like them? Some Bonk action. It's only like 20 bucks. Not bad at all. And Act Razor, also about 20 bucks for a box copy. Uh, and that's great. I still have not played. Uh, there's like a new Act Razor game now, right? Still haven't played that yet, which I should because I am quite the fan of the first and second ActRaiser games. They're both fun, both great graphics, awesome soundtracks, Super Bomberman 2, that's fun. There are a whole bunch of Bomberman games on the Super Famicom that were uh, not released outside of Japan, which is too bad. We got some uh, Sailor Moon stuff here, including Sailor Moon R, which is, I believe, the second beat-em-up. And uh, it's pretty good. Fun two-player beat-em-up action. Sailor Moon S, which is the one-on-one -on -one fighter, which I've seen people actually playing at, like, tournaments and stuff in the recent past, which is, like, baffling to me, because it's not a really great 2D fighter. And uh, another Sailor Moon S game, one of the puzzle games. There are, like, three Sailor Moon puzzle games on the Super Famicom. And then we have, uh, what is this, Panic Bomber? Some uh, Bomberman puzzle puzzle action, if uh, that's your fancy, uh, which I don't see why it wouldn't be. And then this one, very cool. I believe this is like the fourth Gombani Goimon game on the Super Famicom. Uh, good stuff. Uh, really fun. Uh, any Goimon game. There's like there's Gombani Goimon two, three, and then that one which is sort of like a side story game, I guess. Um, but they're all great. We have some more really good stuff here. Yu Yu Hakusho 2, Dragon Ball Z, Super Saiyan Densetsu, all that stuff. And then all these uh, loose cards just hanging on little tabs here, and uh, which is nice. I like that. Instead of having them all just like stacked together or whatever, you can kind of just look, and it's very easy to just browse and look at uh, the front uh, covers, and you know exactly what you're getting. But we got all kinds of stuff. We got, we got Ranma, we got Captain Tsubasa, we got Dragon Quest. So many great games, and then a bunch of boxed Famicom games here, including uh, Okami, something no Okami, Wolf of the Battlefield, aka Commando. Um, uh, but a great game, no denying, classic. And some Top Gun, which, you know, yeah, it's like a pain in the ass to land on that stupid aircraft carrier, or it probably isn't. It's probably something like very simple and easy to do. And the second Top Gun game, Top Gun Second Mission, is that what it's called in the in the U.S.? Um, it's probably much easier to land it than I than I recall. I just never learned how to. Um, and then a whole bunch of loose cards here, and we got some good stuff. But we got a boxed uh, copy of Goonies, the original. And then I just uh, depreciated the value. Thank you, Jim. That's very nice of you. Just drop it. Put that anywhere, pal. Uh, the original Goonies, which I don't think we, we got in the U.S. I think we got Goonies 2. And the first one remained on the Famicom and like MSX and stuff like that. More loose uh, Famicom games, including some Kunio Kun Soccer Transformers, which is a horrible game. But people like it anyway because it's Transformers. Gradius! One of my all-time favorites, even though, you know, the PC Engine version is my fave as far as console ports go. Can't go wrong with the Famicom, some 1943, all these good things. Good, good, good. I mean, not everything is good, but most of it's good. And then, uh, loose Super Famicom carts, more loose Famicom carts. Like I said, in this tiny little space, they packed in quite a lot of good stuff. And then this nice little spinny rack, uh, I, I love. I went through, uh, this quite, uh, in-depth. We got Tiny Toon Adventures, that's 800 yen. And that's just lovely. And we got some some DBZ games. We got some Mappy, some King Kong, if that's your fancy. Some Valkyrie. 
pro wrestling. ER Kung Fu. Just good stuff. And then here I have to stretch, uh, stretch the, uh, the old arm out to get up, uh, this high, to, high, difficult to reach little corner over here. But we got all kinds of good stuff. We got Yoshi's Island. We got Poppin' Twinby. I love that game. Rockman X, one of my favorite games of all time. G Gundam. A little bit of, uh, Cosmo Gang. And again, more other good stuff. Mario RPG. Uh, Act Razor. Super Donkey Kong. Ronma One Half, Bomberman. Just uh, value as far as the eye can see. And what's better than that? And then a very convenient, lovely little handheld section with uh, plenty of Game Boy games. And as you can see, no shortage of these damn Pokemons. Which, growing up as a kid, you know, when Pokemon was big, I never gave a damn about Pokemon. I don't know what the deal was, but we got Rockman 2. Great, great stuff on the Game Boy. Other good stuff there, some Kirby, things like that, and even some Famicom Disk System, which is great because I don't come across too much Famicom Disk. Uh, we've got Kamen Rider Black, and that's pretty cool. There was also, uh, you know, some other very good stuff up there, and then some more loose Famicom carts to browse. Star Wars, Rockman 5, my favorite of the original Rockman games. Even some Dragon Ball and some uh, little Ninja Kun. And then the glass case. Uh, back there you can see uh, Gunmu Martian Memory, which is the Battle Angel Alita game. It's pretty damn cool. Uh, I reviewed that game long ago, but there's Star Wars Fatal Fury Collection. Uh, they had some pretty cool stuff back there. And to wrap things up, we're going to take a look at some consoles here because they had uh, quite a lot on offer, including this boxed Famicom, like a special, uh, I guess, UV cable, like a little converter maybe. Uh, but it can be used with a bunch of different Nintendo consoles. That was 1100 or 11,000 yen, excuse me, about $100 for that. That's quite uh, steep. We got some PlayStations here, though, 66 and 77. AV Famicom, the Model 2, it's 8,800 yen, so under 80 bucks or about 80 bucks, and it's got a three month warranty on it, which is, you know, outstanding. Actually, a lot of these consoles, they're marked as having three month warranties on them. And that's just something that, um, I don't know, can you think of a lot of places that offer three-month warranties on, you know, 30, 40-year-old game consoles? Uh, anyway, that's going to wrap it up for here. Quick look around. Anyway, let's get outside. Okay, so that was okay, I guess. Not too bad. Uh, all the games were concentrated into one little area, but it was... Uh, quite a lot in a very small space so I had a lot of digging to do uh, I did buy a bag of games though 20 I think I got like 24 or 25 games and it came out to about I think maybe with exchange about a hundred and fifteen dollars for like 20 something games so that's not so bad so anyway the hard off hobby off combo here in Okachimachi it's uh it's pretty cool like I said, it's all, you know, all the games are really densely concentrated into one little corner of the shop. Uh, but there was a lot of stuff to pick from, so pretty cool. Uh, anyway, I'm actually going to walk around a bit more, explore Okashimachi a little bit. I'm not very familiar with the area, uh, so that should be fun. But uh, until next time, uh, everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, do come back. We'll do some more game hunting. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.